In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Five weeks ago, we began a series of reflections on the closing words of St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians, his first letter. And one at a time, we've been focusing on these five closing words of wisdom, really commandments that he gave to the church in Corinth. We focused on his instruction to be watchful, to stand firm in the faith, to be courageous. The next commandment we're going to look at today, which is be strong, and last week we looked at the closing one, which was let everything you do be done in love. And we moved them out of order because last week's gospel was focusing on love. But now we turn to that fourth commandment and the final one in our reflection on these important instructions. I think if I were to look at the things that people are most concerned about in their lives, the most common complaint I hear about themselves, about ourselves, is when we feel weak. I hear several times every week, Father, I wish I was stronger. I wish I had more strength. So when we hear the Apostle Paul say to us, be strong, we almost want to say, well, of course, yes, we want to be strong. But where do we find the strength we're looking for? How can we fulfill this commandment? We could talk about all different kinds of strength. I'm going to focus today really on three. And the first kind of strength I want to focus on is something that comes out of today's gospel. Today's gospel brings to us one of the most tragic situations anyone can find themselves in. Jesus is about to enter a city, and as he's going in, there's a funeral procession coming out. Funerals are always sad occasions, but how much more tragic do they hit us when it's a young person? This was a young man. We don't know what he died of, but we do know that he was the only son in his family and that his mother was a widow. She's now left all alone. And we can only imagine, as she began that funeral procession that is interrupted so beautifully by the miracle that Christ performs, but was she thinking, as she got up that morning, how am I supposed to get through this? How do I get up today and walk in that funeral procession to bury my son, my only son, and now I'm alone? You and I may have not faced tragedies as deep as that, but we've all faced them, whether the loss of loved ones, illness of our own or in our families, or sometimes now just experiencing others' tragedies. I don't know if any of us were actually in Las Vegas last week when that horrible tragedy occurred, but we heard about it. We saw a video, we heard audio, we heard people's stories, and it affects us. And we say, how do we go on when that's just one story in a whole series of stories? Hurricane after hurricane, gun violence after violence, war after war, and we say to ourselves, how are we supposed to find the strength? That's one kind of strength that we need, the strength to endure tragedy. Another kind of strength, very different, and one that we don't often associate with needing strength, but this was addressed in today's epistle. St. Paul says to the Corinthians again, Brethren, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. He who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of us must do as he has made up his mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to provide you with every blessing and abundance so that you may always have enough of everything and may provide an abundance for every good work. Beautiful words, but why were they needed? They were needed because in Corinth in the first century, like Michigan in the 21st century, we want to be generous. We want to give, we want to be good stewards 
of what God has given to us specifically with what we give to the church and the things that we give in charity. And yet St. Paul found the need to say and write these words because there were many in his community there in Corinth that felt weak. They wanted to give, but they were afraid. They felt the fear of what if I give and then what is going to happen to me? And so he wrote those beautiful words that God would provide. He was offering words of strength for people who felt very weak, and especially weak specifically in this case in their giving. And the last area I want to touch upon is weakness that I think we all feel, and that is the weakness in our faith. We don't believe as we want to believe. We don't act on our belief as we want to act on our belief. We want to be strong in resisting temptations, and we find ourselves giving in. We want to turn our lives over to God, but the draw to doing things our way, not His way, seems to be so powerful. So we find ourselves weak in our faith. So what do we do? In these areas and in many others, St. Paul says to us, be strong. Sounds simple, and it is. But it's not as hard as we imagine either. There's good news in all of this. We all want strength, and the good news is that it's there. The problem is that we imagine that when we look for strength, we look for the strength we already have, and then our plan is once we find it, we'll act on it. And then we go to look for it, and we're disappointed that it's not there. If you think about every one of these commandments of St. Paul's that we reflected upon, be watchful, stand firm in the faith, be courageous and that everything we do be done in love. If you think about them, every time we talked about those things, what we said was that to do them is not to find the virtue there and then act on it, not to have the strength or plan on building the strength and then acting on it. What we said in each and every one of these situations is that we have to act first. That sounds to us a little bit crazy. How can we be courageous if we don't already have the courage? How can we be watchful if we're negligent? And today, how can we be strong if we have no strength? But therein lies the miracle of what St. Paul is encouraging us to find. It's not about building up and then acting. What it's about is about finding something that we never knew was there. And yet we find that it was there all along. As I was preparing my homily this week, one verse kept echoing back in my mind and my heart. It comes from another letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. When he says to his church there, be strong in the Lord. Again, a be strong commandment. But listen to how he concludes that thought. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His might. He didn't say be strong in the Lord be st in the strength of your might. If He had said this in our typical way, it would have been the right way. Find the strength, act on it, go on, improve. He said be strong in the Lord and the strength of His might. St. Paul knew something that we all need to learn, and that is we need to stop looking for our own strength. We keep waiting for it to build, and we keep being disappointed that it doesn't show up. If we're going to be strong and fulfill that commandment, we're going to find strength, but it's not going to be ours. If we're going to be loving people, we're not going to build up love and then act on it. We're going to look inside and what we're going to find, if we look, is God's love. And then we act on His love. If we're going to be courageous, again, it's not with our own. We look inside and we find that there is courage there that God has planted. 
We want to be faithful. And yet here's one of the ways we often miss the opportunity. When we look inside to see what God is doing, there in the silence of our hearts is the proof that he's real. We look inside for him and we find him there. And with him is courage and strength and love. It's the silent proof that he's real. But reflecting on it a little more, we find out there's more silent proof. Not only is he real, he's not distant, he's not absent, he's not waiting somewhere far away, he's waiting within. That's where God is with all the strength and the love and the courage that he wants to share with us, waiting silently within. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Pretty soon we're going to hear another epistle. We're going to hear St. Paul, this same St. Paul who seems so strong himself, talking about his own weakness. And he's going to say that he prayed to God three times that a thorn in his flesh would be removed. We can only speculate what that thorn is. Was it some kind of illness? Was it some kind of weak temptation that he was very difficult, very difficult for him to fight? We don't know. What we do know is that he prayed three times for God to remove that thorn, and three times the answer was the same. And this was the voice he heard from God. My strength is made perfect in weakness. We're trying to ignore our weakness, and what we find is that's what we need to acknowledge. Because only when we're weak can we acknowledge that we need God's strength. We too often feel too weak to face the difficulties and tragedies of life. If we go to God with our weakness, not try to find strength first, we're going to find that we have already been living off of strength and it was never our own. When we feel too weak to be generous in our financial stewardship of the church and in our other charitable giving, as St. Paul says, do what we've made up our mind to do. One biblical standard is 10%. You can start with five or one, whatever you decide to do. And then acknowledge the fear of letting that go, of making something that was ours and giving it to God and say, it's yours. And in the weakness of that fear, St. Paul says, we're going to see God bless us in ways we could never imagine. We feel so spiritually weak that we don't pray. We don't come to church more often. We don't come on time. In the face of all those temptations, of our laziness and our self-centeredness, we can go to God. Do those acts not because we're strong enough to, but because we're weak. And we find is by taking on those disciplines, in our weakness, we find the strength of God. My brothers and sisters, the time of pursuing our strength needs to end. We keep pursuing and pursuing and finding only disappointment. God has enough strength for all of us, and he'll provide it right when we need it. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.